Hello everybody, welcome to Cubone, my name is Quentin. Today is another Helldivers 2 weekly recap. First things first, yes, I shaved. I don't think it looks good either. You don't have to tell me, but I appreciate the thought. Second, I have a bit of a cold as of recording this Monday night, so, you know, cut me a little slack if I sound a little shit. Third and finally, I was not available Friday or Saturday, which is why we didn't have a stream on Friday. However, that also means that I wasn't available to get the news those days, so I had to pick it up after the fact. Because of that, I might have missed some stuff. Just letting you know. With my camera fixed and with no further ado, let's get into the news. Last Tuesday showed us wrapping up the previous major order by capturing Ursin Sands around 9.30 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, continuing to hold all necessary planets until success. With great effort, the Terminate expansion has been significantly limited by the actions of the Helldivers. Though the bugs now infest some once beautiful worlds, many remain unblemished by tyranny, ready for democratic settlement. Excising the infestation will be taxing, but will require far less expenditure of our resources than our worst case scenarios predict. Almost immediately, however, a new major order began, and this was a big one. Briefing the Planet X-45 in the Ymir Sector is home to a lost advanced weapons lab. From the First Galactic War, buried underneath rubble and abandoned due to dangerously high radiation levels across the planet. The lab was working on development of a powerful interplanetary battle station. Now with radiation levels abated to completely safe levels, excavation and recovery of the lab's work can begin, which would allow the eventual construction of this battle station. However, the automatons have become aware of X-45's importance, possibly through malicious and deceitful cyber attacks. They have launched an opportunistic assault to rout our cutoff forces in the Ymir sector. On High Command's orders, sea forces have begun amassing on Acer Pass. Soon we will be ready to initiate a push to break through the automaton line and relieve our cutoff forces. Until then, the automaton assault may be slowed, but will be extremely difficult to stop altogether. It is imperative that X-45 be held until the plans for the battle station are recovered. If they fall into the automaton's actuators, the results could be disastrous. An interplanetary battle station could finally turn the tide of this war, allowing us to make the push to Cyberstan at long last. But first, the defense of X-45 had already begun, with 15,000 divers immediately jumping on to fight for the planet. A second defense simultaneously began on Wezen, or Weezen, on the western side of the Ymir sector. While Wezen, or Weezen, quickly fell behind with 6,000 divers at 4 p.m., X-45 grew up to over 27,000 as the defense completed roughly six hours after starting at 11.30 p.m. Instead of moving to help Wezen, or Weezen, divers instead chose to reinforce our defensive line around X-45 by sending over 18,000 divers to liberate Meisa. If we secured Meisa along Alongside Vega Bay and Wasat, which were already under our control, then X-45 would be blocked off from bot attacks. This continued on through Wednesday night as the 5,000 on Weezen or Wezen fought valiantly to try and hold the bots back while the nearly 15,000 on Meisa brought it to nearly 25%. Unfortunately, 6,000 divers continued to disobey orders by attacking Gatria, failing to raise it even one-tenth of a percent from the bug's claws. At this rate, it will become the new Malevolon Creek. Despite Despite Diver's efforts raising Mays at over 43% before 10 a.m. Thursday morning, a new defense began on X-45. Over 25,000 divers fought the bots back over 27% by that same time. Slightly after this, a security dispatch was issued. Cybersecurity alert, automaton hacking efforts in the form of malicious messages have been observed recently. These messages prey on well-intentioned patriots with subjects like, check out this patriotic photo, your citizenship classification has been upgraded, and dissident talk amongst your friends. These attacks allow our enemies to breach our secure systems and access secure data. Stay vigilant and report any suspicious messages to your cybersecurity officer. With this warning in mind, divers continued, rising to over 38,000 players as we succeeded in defending defending the system by 2.15 Mountain Daylight Time, roughly eight hours after the defense of X-45 began. Quickly, divers returned to Meisa, with nearly 22,000 divers coming back to the system before so much as washing the oil from their armor. Now, I was unavailable, as I said, for much of Friday and Saturday, and while I tried to piece together the story as best I could, if I missed anything, please let me know. From what I could tell, a new defense began on Wasat, the third system in the defensive line around X-45, around 7 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time. Less 
than 3,000 divers came to its aid, however, with over 27,000 continuing to push Maesa instead, clearing the system around 5 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. This was due in large part to the defense of Vega Bay going on at the same time. If we could clear Maesa, as we did, and protect Vega Bay, the forces on Wasat would be cut off. With peak divers on Vega Bay reaching 18,000 by 5.30 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, the defense was cut short as yet another defense of Mesa seems to have begun right away after liberation. Divers managed to defend the system once again, driving the bots back by roughly 3 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time Saturday at the expense of Vega Bay as well as the expense of a foothold in Wesen or Wiesen. However, as we did manage to save Mesa, this cut off the attack route to Wasat, managing to save that planet around the same time. Afterwards, another Another dispatch came in regarding SEAF recruitment. Informational update, emergency recruitment levels have swelled SEAF ranks to targeted numbers, reducing training throughput requirements. In light of this change, the surviving emergency SEAF training facilities on Heath and Angel's Venture will be shut down and converted into recreational campgrounds for the Democratic Youth Scouts. If I'm not wrong, this means that the SEAF bonus we failed to hold on to for any significant portion of time will no longer be available, even if we capture the required planets. For the rest of Saturday, there was one last defense on Acer Pass, with less than 6,000 divers not quite able to keep the bots back, rising to over 14,000 divers spurred on by yet another dispatch. Strategic alert! The automatons have launched a surprise attack on Acer Pass. If it falls, it will jeopardize our efforts to rescue our position in the Ymir sector. This is of course calling back to the Major Order's initial dispatch, stating that backup sea forces were available on Acer Pass. Despite commands urging, Acer Pass did fall before 10pm Saturday night. Strategic alert, Acer Pass has fallen. With the loss of this position, the strategic viability of establishing a connection to our forces in the Ymir sector has been significantly reduced. X-45 must be held, no matter the cost. Even if the planet cannot be saved, the battle station plans must be secured. The Helldivers are ordered to fight to the last soldier. As if on cue, another defense began early Sunday morning on the key planet X-45, but this time, we had an edge. Strategic update, excavation of the advanced weapons lab on X-45 have recovered an intact cache of a lost support weapon from the First Galactic War, the MLS-4X Commando Rocket Launcher. These weapons will be immediately put to use in defense of the planet. All operations in defense of X-45 will be augmented with the MLS-4X Commando until the end of the current major order. We've gotten the chance to use this weapon for a couple days now, and honestly, it's pretty incredible, feeling so far like a better version of the recoilless rifle. With no backpack and being able to destroy fabricators, hulks, and just about anything below a strider. X-45 wasn't the only system in danger, however, with Wasat and Vernon Wells coming under fire through the day, sporting 10,000 and 2,000 divers each. Meanwhile, Katria on the bug front had 9,000 of its own. Uh, oh. Um. Would you look at that? I'm out of pages. This notebook has done me well. I've been using this since March 12th. That's wild. Say goodbye to the notebook, guys. Anyway, for my new notebook, additionally, Vega Bay had dropped to 35% with 3,000 divers fighting tooth and nail to bring it back. Despite the chaos, X-45 was liberated before 5 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time Sunday and Wasat became the priority once more. As Monday began, Wasat was over 84% defended, though yet another defense began on X-45. The defense of Vernon Wells did sadly fall flat, with a maximum of less than 3,000 divers at its height, but divers made up for it, clearing Wasat around 10.40 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time and returning to X-45. Despite 25,000 divers, there was some lost time to make up for, and with commando rocket launchers in hand, we got to work. By 5 p.m., player count had risen to over 30,000, quickly overtaking the bots and showing them why we have the right to vote. The player count maxed out around 36,000 as the bots were cleared from X-45 at 8 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time. This left divers without a real goal, as the major order would be done in 10 hours, and by 10 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, the most players were on Vega Bay. Not really making a dent. Shortly after 6 a.m. Mountain Daylight Time Tuesday morning, however, it was done. X-45 was liberated, and the plans for the interplanetary battle station were secured. Success! Thanks to the valiant defense of the Helldivers of X-45, the plans for the interplanetary battle station have been received. Work completing this research will commence shortly. Completion of a project this size will take a long time, but the full potential of the station has been made possible by today's victory. The fate of X-45 itself remains unclear, but with the plans recovered, the research station has been destroyed. The 
automatons will find nothing there but lightly irradiated ash. Furthermore, remaining MLS 4X commandos have been successfully shipped off planet, enabling rapid production of the weapon. It will be shortly available for acquisition fleet wide. This is good. I don't think I got enough of a chance to really use the commando, as the footage I showed earlier in this video is pretty much all I have. That said, 15,000 divers chose to continue the assault on Gatria. This continued through the day, rising to 19,000 and eventually reaching nearly 23,000 by Tuesday night. At this point, I must make a last minute correction. Through this entire video, I have been mixing up Gacrux and Gatria. Gacrux is the forest planet that divers really seem to like, and Gatria is a strategic weak point in our line. Being the far south planet of the Jin Z sector, leaving the rest of the sector vulnerable to attack. So players are right to try and take it back, and I apologize. But with no major order announced as of the time of editing this video, that wraps up my notes. I hope you all enjoyed, and with a little bit of a shorter outro this time, the plans for this week are pretty much the same so far. If you enjoy my videos and want to see more, please check out my streams every Thursday at 4 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, Friday at 6 p.m. Mountain Daylight Time, and Sunday at 4 p.m. Mountain daylight time. This week on Thursday, we should maybe be wrapping up Black Ops 2. On Friday, we're playing a driving simulator game called The Long Drive, and on Sunday, we will be playing Black Ops 4 Zombies. That's pretty much all I've got to say for this outro, so without any further ado, remember to be gay, do crimes, and we will see you next time. Bye-bye.